Welcome to the Benzo Free Podcast, your home for an honest, straightforward, and personal discussion about anti-anxiety drugs, their effects, and how to deal with dependence and withdrawal. Whether you have taken benzodiazepines, Z drugs, or any other tranquilizers, know someone who has, or you just want help dealing with chronic anxiety and insomnia, this is your podcast. I'm your host, D.E. Foster, author of the book, Benzo Free, The World of Anti-Anxiety Drugs and the Reality of Withdrawal. I'm so glad you joined us today. Please stick around and let me bend your ear for a few minutes. You just might feel a little better on the other side. Hello there, this is Dee and welcome to episode 115 of the Benzo Free Podcast. And as always, I hope this episode finds you well. There's absolutely no introduction today. <laughs> Since we have a long feature, this is part two of our conversation with Benzo coach David Powers. If you haven't had a chance to listen to part one yet, please go do that. You might want to do that first, and then you can come back here and listen to part two. But before we dive in, Please remember to check us out on our different channels. You can find us on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram via our new handle, at EasingANX. That's at EasingANX. Or even better, visit our new website at EasingAnxiety.com where you can find all our content, search for any subject, log in, set up a personal profile, subscribe to our mailing list, or comment on our nearly 300 posts. And remember, the Benzo Free Podcast is for informational purposes only and should never be considered medical advice. That being said, let's dive into our conversation already in progress. You were talking about the recovery school. So do you have a timeline on this or what's, what's your current plan with it? Oh, uh, I'm getting close. Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm a, I'm a OCD person and I want it to be, really, <laughs> I know I want to be really good. Yeah. I want it to be really thorough, you know? And so I may open it a little bit early just because my, my clients and, and, and the people I, and I don't know if we call it a fan base or whatever, but more like, I guess fan base would be kind of, right? Is that the right word? Well, yeah, or I was, I was thinking like fans of my work maybe yeah. or my message. or, But but they are, you know, like just open the damn school and like we just want a support group. We want yeah. you to be more active. Yeah. I want you to, they, they, you know, they, I've listened to them, you know, and like I was saying earlier, they've directed all of this. They they came up with this idea. I didn't, I wish I could say I was smart enough to think no, about this. I would say wasn't. 90% of stuff I've done have come from the people who listen to the podcast. Yeah. 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 They just said, Dave, you should make a school. And I said, I, I, God, I'm doing so much. I'm, well, just charge a membership and yeah. just, you know, just don't make it crazy. No, make it reasonable. So and, I even start talking with them. Right. I said, like, what about a dollar a day? Like 30 bucks there a month. Go. Right. No, that that's seems, very reasonable. Yeah. Right. That seems pretty no, reasonable. And I said, well, then if I, if I do that, I want to give them something that's really worth it. Not just my time, but like, I said initially I was, you know, I still will release the, um, the, the, uh, online training course as like a, a 10, 15, uh, series module, you know, um, uh, with like, I mean, I don't even know, 15, 20 hours of content or something, you know, and like, I've been working on it for right. years. So I've got like printouts and diagrams and illustrations. And I've really like tried to make this a very easy, almost fun learning process. You know, there's a lot of psychoeducation, a lot of psychoeducation, so, so I wanted it to be something, and so I found uh, this perfect place uh, called Mighty Networks. Oh wow! I was the best. I was about to use that for mine. Actually, that's the one. Yeah. If I had, if I didn't build my own in Wix, I would have gone to Mighty Networks because that was a really good platform. Right, it's a great platform. I started, I started to do it with Wix, but then it was just something about. It's more work because Mighty Networks has more upfront. I mean, most of the stuff's done right. for you on Mighty Networks, which is nice. You know, and I still might go yeah. there for mine. I'm not sure. But right now I have the membership on my Wix site. Yeah. I just like the way it was set up. It's so it's almost like a Facebook group where you could have yeah. the main feed, but then you could have these other rooms. And it and so these rooms would be like so if I have a room called the Powers Manual, which is I like called my online mm -hmm. my, my program. So if you want to buy the program, say 10, 15, 20 hours, you could just buy it out off outright. Boom. But if you join the the membership group then i'll have it there as well okay. you know what i mean so so some people maybe wouldn't want to do that or maybe somebody wants someone's not too sick or not able to you know wouldn't engage that way so hey maybe you can just order this little video series and get them started and then maybe they would like if they want a bigger support group then fine um but 
Mighty Networks let me, you know, build this thing where I could have all these video series, quizzes, yeah. discussion forums, and then I could take the dis more. This is really what sold it for me was not just the integration of the the training courses, but the, the fact that I could have, um, uh, I can insulate people's experience, as okay. they say, you know. So like on Facebook, we kept going back and forth. People half the group wanted to talk about symptoms, the other half didn't. I mean, it was like I was getting pulled. I mean, literally, people would write me and go, I don't think it's fair that you won't address symptoms. <laughs> and, you know, we come to you, we listen to your channel, and we come to you for advice, and we want you to talk to us. That's why we're here. I said, okay, uh, well, I hear you. I understand that. Yeah. And the other half said, I, if you keep talking symptoms, I'm going to leave because I didn't come to this. This is not what it's supposed to be. So I said, God, how do you please everybody? So yeah. with the Mighty Networks, I said, oh, I can make discussion forums, and, and one will be called Symptom Talk. And if you want to have talk symptoms, I'll answer your questions. You have to click on that. You, there's no getting triggered on accident. Right. You know what I mean? If you, you see it's a symptoms talk, yeah. you go in there, you know what you're getting. Just like the other group might be a mindfulness talk or something. Mm -hmm. So you know when you go in there, we're talking about mindfulness or spirit or diet and nutrition or whatever we're going to be talking about. You yeah. know? But I thought that would be great so that way everybody could get all the resources and uh, and the support. And also Mighty Networks was, was pretty cool is, you know, it, it creates these profiles for everybody and it'll either even tell you like who's in your vicinity. So if you're like in right, Texas, right. you might see, and there's 50 people in there. Maybe you see several people that are in your area and go, oh, wow, that, and you connect to them and that's kind of cool, you know? So it, I love that idea that it might bring these little mini communities because I know a lot Sounds of my, good, yeah. you know, yeah, a lot of my, my people in my group, like they, they talk and have little messenger you know, little private messengers yeah. that they all like interact in. They tell me about it and they go, oh yeah, we got seven people on this one. It's from the group <laughs> and we all write each other all day. And I go, well, be careful. You're not making like little mini bars, you know. That sounds good, man. You got, you got a shot project going there. I think that'll be great. <laughs> yeah, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. promote it on my site when you, when you get launched and everything. Oh, like I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm happy that. to, man. And, and you know what? I was thinking of you because uh, just like you kind of alluded to earlier, I was like, man, I would love to have like, uh, more like guest speakers yeah. and, and people that could come in and do some cool I'd stuff. And like, to. you've got great stuff going on. And I was yep. like, man, this would be a great, a private it's, 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 you know, it's private. So people won't see what everyone's doing. I think that people want a privacy yeah. in this kind of uh, environment, but you could go in there and have like a Skype session or a zoom exactly. session or whatever and say, um, these going to come in and talk about, you know, the latest things he's doing in medical research yeah. for benzos or something cool like that, or he's going to share something, you know, and then just have different people. So I was talking to like Jennifer Swantowski mm -hmm. and a few people and I was like, we should all work with, with each other. Exactly. Why not? This is exactly. Like, I'm glad you said that. Competition. Yeah. And that's what, that's exactly what I was just about to say is I've never seen, anybody in the benzene community has competition i just never have it's like we we got a huge right. problem to deal with here and we need we need all hands on deck i don't care we need all and yeah. everybody and it's okay if you do it completely different than i do it for some people find right. what you do valuable some people find what i do valuable we need variety we need different paths for yes. different people and i'm a huge believer in that and so yeah that's why i promote you know everybody i promote jennifer lee's work i promote your work i'll promote it's like because you know i want people to have a choice you know, to say, hey, I really like what David does. I like his, you know, his 14 now, you right. know, principles. And I I like the direction he's going right. and the background with his, you know, psychology. It's like, that really works for me. It's yeah. like, awesome. You know, then then go right. to that. I and agree. yeah, I'm, I'm all for crossing over and helping out. I'd be happy to help out with yours and and talk over there and vice versa. Um, you know, I actually still like the idea. We talked about maybe throwing a round table together where we have a regular, um, you know, podcast yeah. or something. I think you and I got to talk about that because I love that idea. And I think Great. we could set something up I where would, we just do something regularly, you know, and we could bring on other people it. and have people come talk. Yeah, it. it'd be awesome. Trying to get Jennifer. I, I was like, yeah. me, you and Jennifer, me, you, I think I'm doing a, um, I got, I think I have it set up to do a podcast with Geraldine Burns, Geraldine Burns. Geraldine is, yeah. One of the, one of the, I, I, my, my, the one I had with her, I called the pioneer or I think pioneering Benzo because she was like one of the very first, she was like the very first podcast. Um, Geraldine's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I did a lot of work in Massachusetts, I know, with that group up there trying to get informed consent and everything. So, yeah. I wish I could, t I wish I knew. I'll have to come back to it. It'd be good to plug that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, when, when, what day yeah, if you see that, let me know. That was yeah, I can, and actually, yeah. even if it's after we talk, let me know because I'll put an intro on here and I can add it to the intro if you if you don't have it handy right now. 
Yeah, I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have okay. to find it. I'm not seeing it on the calendar, but um, but she would be a great person. Me, you, and her. Oh, yeah. Me, you, and Jennifer. Well, that's what I was thinking. It's know, like we get one um, or two regulars, and then we just bring people in rotating. Do a roundtable kind of thing where we have one or two guests each week, and you rotate those around, and you have kind of that you know setup and have conversations like this. I think this would be great, and people would love that. And we could all help promote our own channels and our own work we do. And I mean, I don't see how it's going to go wrong. I think it'd be awesome. And I'd love to work with you on it. I think just talking with you, I think you and I would be good ones to get that kicked off and get started. So. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah, definitely. We have good conversations. I got a lot of good feedback from uh, the conversation we had. Oh, you know? good. Yeah. People were writing me like, you got to have him back <laughs> on you guys. That was such a cool conversation oh, thanks, and I learned so much from it and, yeah. I was like, yeah, that's great, man. But yeah, we're not we're not in competition. You exactly. Know what I mean? and, and it's like, yeah. and I agree. Everybody um, has a unique thing. Like, uh, I appreciate everybody's work. Like Jennifer Swan, such a sweetheart, and she has this very nurturing, yeah. um, a clear weeks kind of style to her. You know, that's very cool. And people will gravitate toward that and they need that. And there's a, there's a place for that. Exactly. And if I'm focusing more on limbic and this and this and that neuroplasticity is a place for that. And if Jennifer Lee's focusing on like, yeah, diet diet's really big that, with there's her. A place exactly. There's a place for that. And I love what right? she does. Yeah. And someone else will come down the line. Someone will come down and be a, a master. I, I had heard your name a couple times before, but until you had done the commentary on my podcast, I hadn't really looked into it. There's, that's a, that's a thing yeah. I'm always alerted to is how many people out there are working this, and we just don't always right. know about everybody. I mean, I usually hear about other people from the listeners on my podcast. They say, "Have you checked into so and so?" And it's like, "No," but let me go mm -hmm. look. And then I send out an invite right. to come on my podcast or something, and we start a conversation, and that's how it happens. You know, and, and, and you know what? And and even if we all did the same exact thing, the same model. Uh, people like just different personalities that they relate exactly. to. So there'll be people that just like you. Right. They just they look at you. This guy reminds me of me, and I just like him. And some people will, oh, I just like her. I just like. I so remind like, you of your your bass player, was it? Yeah, <laughs> I remember that <laughs> yeah. from our first conversation. <laughs> uh, I gotta dig up a picture and send it to yeah, you. Yeah, you have You're to do that. Go, what That's the funny, hell? <laughs> oh, and I just see on the the calendar here, Geraldine Burns. Uh, next. This next Monday, actually, the 27th oh, at 6 p.m. Eastern. So well, tell her I said hi. Yeah, home. I do. So I haven't talked to her in a while, but she's a sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah, she's awesome. She really is, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's good that you're getting into coaching and uh, You know, and some. I think it's more to be more group stuff. I still want to do uh, maybe some online courses um, because I've done some of those, and some of my video courses have been more successful and stuff like that. So I might do some of that, right. um, but all on the channel and do that kind of stuff. But like I said, crossover, I'm happy to do to work with somebody else if we want to, like yourself, and we can do right. a dual one and offer it on both of our channels. You know, there's so much potential yeah. there for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think there's there's a lot we could do. So I wanted to touch on your film stuff because you talked about a short you're working on, but I also know you've been working for a while on your feature. I don't know if you can share right. a little bit of that with people who are listening because I don't think not everybody knows about that side and what you're working on right now. Yeah, I, I, I've i made several movies now, shorts and uh, the feature and a couple pilots. We shot a bunch of commercials, like all kinds of stuff. And I've shot everything from like vampire films to moody dramas to this new thing we did was a uh, a survival parody. And, you know, it's a comedy about, you know, people like uh, Naked and Afraid and I Will Survive. It's actually calling it I Will Survive. And it's like four contestants go out into the woods and have to survive for 30 days. Oh, and, wow. You know, they only have like the clothes on their back and one tool that they could yeah. bring. And and uh, and then by the end of it, they encounter a Bigfoot. So it's <laughs> like that. But so it's been fun. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's been fun shooting in the woods. So so that's a good little mix up. This is a little short film. We do challenges. And I think I might have said before, we shoot a lot of short films as um uh, pitches, you right. know, for potential investors and say, hey, if you like this nine or 10 minute version, you know. Yeah, exactly. And then you get the funding to do the feature. Yeah, I got you. Right. Like, right. It's the log line for the bigger mm -hmm. film, you know, or something. Oh, anyway. yeah. So let's talk your feature, the, fe the Benz and Isabel feature you're working on. Yeah. So, so that was a few years in the making. I mean, um, we shot that for a full year, wrapped up that like late last year, like maybe the 11th, like uh, November, December, -ish, you know? And um, so just been editing it. And I told you I've ran into a couple problems with computers yeah. and technology and had to rebuild the damn thing twice. But that was about, you know, that was an archetypal story. And that was inspired by 
a good friend of mine who uh, committed suicide, you know, took her own life uh, and it broke my heart. Yeah. I mean, it just broke my heart. And I knew then, like, I, I don't know why one night uh, I was just sitting up just thinking, you know, and I thinking about everything and thinking about her and, and I had this, the, you know, being a writer, you get it. Like you just sometimes have like how musicians just hear a melody. You have like a, a scene or something will just come yeah. to you. And in my mind, you know, she, she was standing by a, a bridge and I had walked, I had, was driving home one night and I saw her and I stopped and, uh, and I, I convinced her to get in the car and I drove off and, and had a conversation and, and was able to turn her around. Right. Like, is this, I couldn't get that out of my head. Like, I wish I could have done yeah, that for her. Yeah. You know, I wish I could have done that. I wish I could have done that. And so then that just became, what if I made a movie where I could do that? Like, it just made sense. This is what I've been doing anyway. Maybe I can make a movie in a way, you know, that would be, would be similar. It's not, it's not in the film, but, but, and, you know, almost as a metaphor. But, um, so then I wrote a short, I wrote like a short 20 pages or something like that. And, uh, I wrote this, 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 my friend's uh, family and I wrote a brother, I think it was. And I said, I want to do something, but I don't want to disrespect the family in any way. And I wouldn't put her name or any of that. You know what I mean? But but, you know, I'm an artist, so it, it, my allegiance is to art first, like, and I'm one of these, um, like, deeply moody artists, you know, that want to be uh, life imitating art, art imitating life. I didn't care about the money or any of that. I mean, I was fascinated by people who lost themselves in their craft, you know, and had this just otherworldly experience. And I thought, I'm willing to go completely exposed out there and, but, and, and say, and bear my soul, but I didn't want this wouldn't be fair to her family. Yeah. Right. So I wasn't, so then it was like, how far do I go with this and how do I tell the story? And okay, I'll change this detail and I'll change the names and I'll change all these things. And then as I just got into it, I thought, you know, you're, you're, it's like you're exercising a demon. Mm -hmm. So you want to get that exorcism out through the project. But the story was basically um, what I would consider like the archetypal Benzo story, which is like person took a drug for X reason and, then came off, tried to come off it, and life spun upside down, and they lost everything, and they were at the edge of death's door, maybe, and and they had to learn or discover or find something to turn it around and find some salvation. Yeah. And then, you know, so the 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 there was like three goals into this film. Was one was give somebody validation, mm -hmm. give everyone validation, you know, and to lead them, in a sense, uh, out of darkness, you know, to show them some kind of path right and so i was worried that people were going to get um and i know i will have my detractors and my my critics that are going to say it's not dark enough well i don't want to make a stephen king no, Benzo no, film, I guys. That, yeah you know what i mean so i think it pretty damn dark but but i had heard a director say you know if you're going to lead someone in the darkness you got to lead them out as far as storytelling i love a good tragedy the hero didn't learn his lesson right. or he learned it too late you know that's a that's strong but not in this, no. God. You know, you want to, you know, you want to give people hope. Exactly. Man. And, I mean, that was the premise that this there is hope. That's the premise of it. So it would be a disservice to say there wasn't hope, mm -hmm. despite what you know. Someone who says, "Well, I'm still suffering. And there is no hope. I'm very sorry for you, but but we're outliers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And for most people, there's uh, I say everyone. There's hope. Absolutely. It's a game of endurance and resilience. You know, and eventually, if you keep fighting the good fight, you will yep. win. I truly believe that with everybody. So. You know, I, I wanted to validate them and I wanted to find paint the the archetypal picture of the story that even though it's a female protagonist and, and her set of circumstances, you or I and the next person can watch everybody this can relate somehow. Yeah. yeah, you can find a yeah. way to relate and invest yourself in that and go, oh, man, that's me. And I wanted it, you know, as you're writing it and filming it and doing this, like you're having these visions of the future and you're thinking, I want, I'm trying to picture my my audience and then maybe it's a woman sitting on a couch with her husband and she's watching it with him. She said, you see, you see that part right there? You see how she's pacing? Mm -hmm. That's me. And then, and then he's watching it and going, yeah, that's my wife. That She did that. And she, and, but now he's immersed in a whole other way that he couldn't have been just watching from the outside in the house, right? Now he's like, even though he's so intimately involved in that experience, it's very different. But to watch it in a film and see it all play out in this big picture... And then I wanted to have like all the I wanted to have the critics. I wanted to have the your typical psychiatrist that says it's your pre-existing condition. And I wanted to have the family member that just didn't get it that said, you know, walk it off. Yep. You know, 
tighten up, you know, be strong. Yeah. Or maybe you need to go back on the meds, damn it. Uh, you know, yeah, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, and I wanted to have the good friend. And I wanted to have the friend that was means well, but maybe she was a little too deep into the rumination or, or, or this or that. You know, you, sometimes you find these people that are a little bit almost subtly toxic oh, for yeah. you in a way, you know, and despite their best efforts and, and what they mean, you know, their best intentions, they're kind of like, and you go, oh, God, he or she's writing me again. And every time I read that, man, it just scares the hell mm -hmm. out of me. And I feel like, you know, it's like you got to save yourself at some point. Exactly. You can't just go down with everybody. Like sometimes you have to cut off and, and do what you got to do to survive. You take care of yourself first. Otherwise, you can't take care of others. Yeah. Right. And if you want to heal and then come back and oh, be God, yeah. a soldier, we welcome well, that, right? Please. So, we would we'll love to see you. You got to go heal. Yep. Yeah, healing is first. Yeah. And burnout is so common for people in, that do what you and I do and other people. And so you need to have some oh stability. God. You need to have some strength before you take this. That's on, a great point. You know. That's a great point. And that's why I also like that you're finally, from what it sounds like, uh, trying to get compensated for what you're doing. Yeah, we have to at some if you point. Don't, yeah. you, you do, because first off, you got to pay your bills. And and another time, another thing is you'll, you will burn out faster if you don't. You got to have some, you know, a sense of personal accomplishment needs exactly. to be there. Some kind of value that you go, okay, yeah, I paid the light bill. Exactly. <laughs> and, yeah, it's something, you know. Some people on the outside go, just do it because you're a good person and be like Mother Teresa. And it's like, look, both of us, probably more than many others, did that for a very long time. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And I still put out f free videos. I still run a free support group. I still write emails and comments and. I have weekly phone calls with people that I don't charge yep. just because they don't have the money yep. and I'm worried about them. Exactly. You know, I do, I do all of that stuff yep. still, you know, but I still have to play, pay my bills. So at some point it's like, if people want D to stay involved, he's got to pay his bills. So uh, we have to make it work for everybody. I yeah. We have to find a way to make, to keep this going. There's gotta be, you know, we right. got to monetize it because we need to make a living. It's just that simple. And yeah. if we're going to spend, all our time doing it there's no other time to go work another job to support it you know so yeah. if we're going to spend all our time right. in this we got to find a way to make a living doing it so right people will start to get upset if, if d goes uh well i can only do this one day a week yeah. now because i got to work this other job exactly. five or six days yeah. and they go well th that's not fair yeah. it's not fair to us yeah. it's like well I, I, I then okay then i'll do this well you're why are you charging well, which one? And, and I get it for I some people. It it's ways. like, hey, they're, they've lost their job. They have no income. It's like they can't afford this right. stuff. And you know what? We're going to try to work with them to some, like you just said, you sometimes do things with people for free and we're not looking to exclude them. But the problem is, right. is that we have to, you know, it's like if, if those same people went to a psychologist or went to a doctor, they're paying those people. You know, right. it's like they're oh, paying God, those people yeah. for that service. And, you know, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, for some reason, it's like, you know, with the experience that you and I have and others have, it's like, you know, we've built up, you know, reputation and experience and knowledge, and we're just trying to share that back, but we need to make a living right. doing it and not make a profit, but make a living, you know, and that that's a right. difference. I'm not looking to make a profit at all. I want to put most of my money back into what I'm doing, but I got to, yep. yeah, I want to turn the lights on and I want to eat, you know, something more than, you know, spam for dinner. And, you know, it's like, so, yeah, absolutely. I'm yep. With you. Uh, yep. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta pay your light bills. I say, you do. Yeah. but, um, you know, and, and so I thought, look, 30 bucks a month for a membership, that's a dollar. It sounds a very that reasonable. Not too bad. No, it's very reasonable. And, yeah. and if I put in all my recovery, like, so when I build this, this, this course and mm -hmm. it's finished, I'll feel like I finally, like I can rest almost like I finally put out something, you know yeah. what I mean? That's like here. This will help you. I know this can help you. I'm right. so confident this will help you. Even if it takes 15% of your suffering away, that might be enough to to not harm yourself and get through yeah. it. You know what I mean? So I want to do something like that and then just put it in part of the the support group. It, you know, it's a benzo school slash uh, support group. So that way for 30 bucks, you can go in there and get all of 15, 20 hours of like really – refined mm -hmm. uh treatment planned stuff that will help you if you're dealing with agoraphobia anxiety whatever you yeah, know what i mean great. diet nutrition all of that you get all of this stuff and then i'll be able to you know do like weekly zoom mm -hmm. you know uh live q a webinars answering questions directly exactly. so it's like you get full access to all of that so i thought that made sense you know and, and um 
And then if it grew, then I would be able to invest more time. Then maybe I would do less coaching and do more group stuff. Yeah. I would love to do group stuff, you know, because the idea is I, if I spend one hour on a one-on-one coach, I helped one person, yep. right? For whatever my hourly rate is. But for a fraction of that, I can give you 15 hours of coaching. Right. You know what I mean? With like printouts and then things, because, you know, you, you, I, I can't, if I'm making a point, I don't have a diagram mm -hmm. uh, to show someone in the moment of talking, but it, with the video, I can say, go to watch this. Yeah. Like I, I spelled out beautifully there because I took my time and I, you know, I wrote that out yeah. and scripted that out just perfectly to say how exactly what I mean to say there. And then there's, you know, a study guide or this Sounds or that. Great. I just feels like a just feels like a better model yeah. right and then you can and so then you're talking about not trying to exploit anyone in terms of money it's like i don't know how else I for know. any cheaper to put so no, much in no. and offer yeah. so much for so little right it's like here's 30 hours a day for 30 bucks yeah. you know no that's a great price yeah i don't yeah i don't even know i, I i've run through some numbers from me but it would you know I don't know. I don't know what I'd be doing, but I'm kind of still my, my problem was I, oh, mean, yeah. I, I planned on launch this over a year ago, but then my parents, you know, with their care and then them passing away. So it's like it ate up, you know, a year and a half of my life. So I kind of just got sidetracked. So now I'm finally back to it and kind of, you know, just trying yeah. to get launched again. But I got the I spent most of my time on the the um computerized structure of it. So now I gotta work on the other mm -hmm. side. You know, I got the the background built. Now I just gotta start building from it on the front end. So yeah. right. It's exciting stuff, man. It is, man. Yeah. You know, I, I I had multiple coaches writing me, and some you know co big coaches in mm -hmm. this in this area, uh, benzos, and they were like, "Your rates are way too low." You I know, know people I are going to take you as serious if you don't, yep. you know. And that, and again, so I say I'm a bad business person because mm -hmm. I'm like, I just want to help people. Well, and and they may they change. I mean, you, you may see that they may have to change a little bit, and that's possible too. It's like yeah. you you don't know until you get into it, but. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's possible they're coming at it from a different angle, and I get that. But with with your background and your degree that you're you know you're finalizing here, it's you know yeah you easily could charge a lot more, but it's your right. business. You get to charge what you want to. I'm not about to judge what you're yeah. charging. You know, mm -hmm. it's like yeah, yeah. You want to find that that spot where you can yeah, uh, like you said, make a living and help. Yeah, you. there's got to be a balance. Yeah, mine, mine's actually I'm I'm planning on setting up a tier. So there would be a tier, probably about similar price to get people in the door. But then for more personalized yeah. stuff, there'd be a separate tier, you know. And so, hey, for right. 45 bucks right. a month, you know, we can go up here and that kind of stuff. And that allows people to have a little more access. And that's something you could always yeah, add, too. It's right. like that's something you can always set up is, you know, more personalized instruction or more mm -hmm. direct or more access. And you can pay a little more. And that right. way people can still get the base level of care, but you can pay yeah. a little more for something extra. So. <clears throat> I think my goal would be to try to be involved like four or five days a week yeah. and, and have those yeah. days each be something special. So That's maybe good. Tuesday is arts and craft time and Wednesday is uh symptom. Bring all your talk about symptom and your questions about that. And then Thursday is mindfulness okay. day and we've worked on acceptance commitment and we, we go, you know, or maybe Monday is like everybody shares their stories mm -hmm. or talks about spirit or faith or I don't know, you know, just, just find some kind of, something to look forward to because it's groundhog day when you're going oh, through this yeah. and it, when you find someone that you like and people really like you and people really like me you know i think they want more of your time they just want to hear you know yeah. they want more of your time they want to kind of hang out with you they're like can you come live with me for yeah, like, I know. Yeah. the next six months while i recover and just like yeah. help me do things that was one <laughs> of the know? things we did with that with the work group that i coach here in colorado we were one of our things was to create a pilot clinic. And so I, I always had, you know, my vision, of course, you know, the ruminating thought, sometimes it's a good thing. And I could start to envision what this looks like. So, you know, I pictured um, the commune in the Colorado mountains, you know, kind of like Shambhala Center we have, because we have Shambhala Center mm -hmm. up here, uh, the Buddhist Center, not too far from where I live. But, you know, a nice commune up there where people can actually come, you know, we got cabins, you know, they can stay if they need to, they can get the care they need to. There's not a, a rush. It's not a 30 day program. It's, it can be a three month program. It can be, you know, and we have out, you know, just kind of, I always thought that would be a great yeah. thing. You know, we only need a few, yeah. you know, three or four mil to get that kicked off. But other than that, you oh, know, it's like it would be. I am so there. But it would be awesome. To, I, I would love to see that set up where all of us can contribute yeah. to something like that one day. And we have, you know, and then we, we can it. even branch out and have some other ones across the country. But to have a really solid 100%. benzodiazepine clinic that is, you know, uh, like originally Ashton based, feeds yeah. off of mindfulness, feeds right. off of CBT, feeds off of mm -hmm. all the great things that we've learned along the way that feed into it. 
but also has the diversity of thought and of um, from the different coaches, you know, so we can have different people working right. there within, you know, a general life. I think that would be, that would be my vision. I'd love to see that one day and maybe, maybe we'll create that someday. I think that would be amazing. So, uh, yeah, it's, that's been my fantasy for like year, five, at least five years now. Yeah. I've been telling people like, I'm like, one day I want to open up uh, a, a benzo um, rehabilitation center yeah. or some kind of like support group on the beach. Oh, there you go. The yeah. Woods. You know, because I'm in Florida, I was like, "Wouldn't it be cool to have one on oh, the beach?" Be awesome. And we wake up in the morning, and we first off, we give everybody structure because yep. it's what we need. We get structure, so we get up in the morning and we go out on the beach. We watch the sunrise, mm -hmm. and we do yoga on the beach for the first hour, and we eat our fruit or our light breakfast or something, and we go for a walk, and then we do group therapy, and then we, you know, maybe we have to do an arts and craft time, and then we go back and we do this, and 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 I thought. If if like especially with my my program, like my approach mm -hmm. of the idea of like having these sort of you know, my approach is sort of like have a series of checklists every day that you can kind of hold yourself accountable to. So if you say, today I'm going to go for a 30 minute walk and then I'm going to make sure I get a shower because sometimes I you know, you know, I know. to brush my teeth. Sometimes, sometimes it's just I made, today I'll I get out of bed. I mean, if sometimes that's, yeah, that's right, the right. great goal for the day. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And I believe in like having uh, like different phases yeah. or tiers of programs like for that reason. So that's why I started to make that, uh, that, um, quiz that sort of I wanted the placement quiz to say well if you're scoring this then you're probably having our you know you're not going to do a 30 minute walk every yeah. day can we do two minutes yeah can we do you know is your baseline 300 steps can we make 350 by the end of the mm -hmm. week right like th that's reasonable exactly just, just yeah walk things up like that you know but have like a little checklist of things to do and then I thought if I had a school I mean a uh, like a like what we're talking about like a, a center that we could go, even if you have someone that's, you know, they'd have to be people that are a little bit more functioning, mm -hmm. you know, to a point, right? Because otherwise you would get, it would get really difficult. It would with, be with, uh, yeah, with ones, but, yeah. you know, you need people that are like kind of at a certain point in their recovery yeah. that maybe need a little more guidance and, and, a, and a push and maybe they just come off benzos uh, recently and they're sort of still halfway in it, you know, mm -hmm. or, or something I feel like, and then have them, you know, we could, like I said, have this structure and then have them have their, checklist you know and then we we just we practice this routine say for 30 or 90 days so then when they go home they got momentum yeah. like we've done all the hard part you know we've they've got the lean on the support and have all of that so when they come home now they're in this mojo this mm -hmm. momentum they can they get up they go for their little walk and they do the their, their yoga and they have their breakfast and they have you know they have this series of activities they're doing every day that maybe is activating some neuroplasticity for them whether it's like art making or this or that and once you have that you're good yeah. it's like getting a trainer going to oh, the yeah. gym to lose exactly. weight like the hardest part is that first like step to just get in there and, and it go, really is really and, and to get that little success too it's that success of right. wow i actually did that today and that you can right. build on that's something you can build yep. on so once you start seeing those results, oh, it gets I addictive. Know. And benzo people are the same way. Yeah. You know, we go right from I'll, I'm I'm devastated, I'm never going to heal, I can't move, I can't do anything, and then once you start to go like, hey, I can kind of I can go for a thirty minute walk exactly now in the morning, like you know that's I can go to the mailbox, right. I can drive my car to the to the corner store and back now again, you know, and like you, it's like addictive. You're like, what else can I do? Yeah. What else can I do? What else can I do? You know. And that's where we need to be. And I think people need to, and I love more than just recovering from Benzo. I want to see people, I want the ultimate recovery story. Yeah. Why not go back to college? Yeah. Why not start thinking about what you're going to do in the well, future? Well, that's something we talk you know? about. Yeah. It's all possible. And we talk about that on my podcast sometimes about, it's like, this is, yes, this is one of the most difficult things you may face in your life. Absolutely. And we know that, but it's also an opportunity. This is an opportunity yeah. for change for the better. It's an opportunity for you to take, you know, you know, assessment of your life, what got you here, what you want, how you right. want to redirect yourself. Cause, and that's my frustration I've always had with people that said, well, I just want to get back to normal. It's like, well, do you, I mean, the normal right. for you led you to this medication most likely. So is that where you want right. to go back or do you want to wind up better? Right. Do you wind up what, you know, so this is an opportunity for you to learn new skills, new tools, new thought, but, you know, many of us change our personality. But that change in personality right. doesn't have to be a bad change. It could be a good change. You know, I, right. I actually became more, my wife, I mean, I, I won't always, I usually get tears when I talk about it, but um, 
it was only the first couple of years coming off of it. I was going through so much hell coming off Klonopin, and then I started to feel a little better. But um, I, I was doing mindfulness. I was doing yoga. I was doing meditation. I was throwing all these things in there just to get myself based. I did that before I even started tapering. And she finally just said to me, she said, you know, you're you're a better, it wasn't a husband, it was you're a better partner now. She said, you're a better person. And it's like, I just yeah. broke down. I mean, my wife to say right. that, she said, I, she said, I always loved you, but you were always here and there. And I'm an ADHD guy and I'm all over the place. Yeah. But basically I slowed down and I started paying right. attention to what matters. And I started paying more attention to what mattered to her too. And I became a better 100%. person. And that's yeah. something I've carried with, I believe, since then. And that's yeah. helped my marriage. That's, you know, so these are those opportunities to yeah. make some yeah. positive changes, you know. And it's a powerful message, you're right? That's that's the message for your listeners is like, you don't just survive this, right? Why just survive it? 100%. It's like the guy who was always obese, who never, he drank too much caffeine, too much sugar, too much carbs. And then one day he has that little mild heart attack. Yeah. And it, thank God it wasn't too no, bad. But it's, it he turns his up. whole life yep. around. He wakes up, man. Now this guy goes, you know, you fast forward two or three years later, this guy is an avid jogger. Yeah. He's lost all the weight. He has 8% body fat. Mm -hmm. He eats lean and great. He's His mental health is better than ever. He's driven. His relationships are better. Everything turned around because of this heart attack that could have exactly. killed him. Exactly. Right? This is like that situation. It's like the mild heart attack that you survive. Yeah. And if you... You don't have to be on blood thinners and be just like disabled the rest of your life. Like you can actually fight this, come out of it and yeah. be this. It's exactly what, yeah, I, I talk about the same thing. I always compare it to NDEs, you know, near-death experiences, which you, like you said, is a heart right. attack. And NDEs seem to really have probably one of the highest propensity for people to totally change the direction of their lives, you know, because it, it right. forces you, it, it, it shows you, you know, your mortality, which is a huge thing. And it shows you what life yeah. can be on the dark side and appreciate what right. life was on the good side or what life can even be better, you know, as you come right. through it. And that gratitude and that appreciation is a huge thing to, to suddenly get when you didn't yeah. really have it before, you know, gratitude is huge. I, I think that's one of the biggest things is, yeah. you know, there's no matter how yeah. bad in pain you are in benzo withdrawal, there is always something to be grateful for always. Right. And, and that right. and being grateful can actually help pull you out of, that dark day sometimes, you know. Hell yeah, yeah. it does. Right. And, and reverse engineering, being a narcissist or being lack less grateful can make you exactly. sick. Exactly. Absolutely. You know, it's like a black hole. It pulls Absolutely. you in. My my initial base in clinic in, in psychology was uh, very Jungian. <clears throat> so I love talking with Jennifer Swan because she's uh she's knows a lot about uh Jungian psychology too. And we get in some in you know, his his basis was two things at least individuation and self-actualization become an individual which is a whole process you're not just born an individual maybe you are born an individual but you somehow lose it seems like over the years yeah. but f find out who you are or rediscover invent it whatever find out who you are become an individual and then self-actualize it means you have a potential yeah. you know evolution didn't end with your thumb like there's a potential in this life and that's why i think you know when you got emotional we're saying your wife telling you you've become a better person, it hits you so hard because I truly believe it's the basis of our evolution. And so did Jung. You know, he said, like, this is your highest calling is to become a better person. And if you don't become a better person, you're going to become more miserable. You're going to become more neurotic and you're going to suffer. So we always talk about reverse engineering. It's like, what's the reverse engineering of that? It's like become an actual, actualize your potential and watch. Look how good it feels to you to go, I'm a better man. It feels good. I'm a better Absolutely. husband. I'm helping people. Yeah. I mean, even just things when you go, my blood pressure's down, my weight's down, I'm eating better, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm a better father. I'm, a, you know what I mean? Like whatever it is, because it's something inside you, you're in your, it's in your DNA, I believe, is pushing you to become better yeah. and better and better. And collectively, all humanity has been doing this forever, oh, right? I mean, and and if nothing else, we so understand suffering better. Which you don't wish right. on anybody, but boy, that puts you in a place of compassion and caring that some people just never will get to, you know, but we understand right. suffering and that's something, you know, that's, yeah. that's a point to come from that people can relate to and connect with, you know, to right. truly understand that. So you, there's no growth without pain. Exactly.
So that's exactly. kind of all the, the, the overarching theme here yeah. is like, you know, tran- I always say it's like alchemy. Transmute this suffering into gold. Transmute this base metal into gold. Transmute this suffering into something Exactly, better. exactly. You know what I mean? Thrive. Yeah. Show Benzos. Yeah. You know, tell Benzos to kiss you your ass you. and and, th- and thrive. Don't just survive it. Yeah. Come out better. You know what I mean? That's how you do it, I think, right? It's like, what did I say? Revenge is like living a really good life. Exactly. You yeah, after I mean? somebody wrongs you or something bad happens to you, yeah. it's living a good life. That's real revenge. It's like, see, you right. didn't wipe me out. You did not destroy me. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. I love it. And my doctor told me, you're going to have to be on Benzos the rest of your life. Mm, nope. <laughs> 10 years later, I'm better than I was before. Exactly, benzos. Yeah. My so, doc said the same thing. Sure. He said, he said, my, my, my wife is even on benzos. Why would I not prescribe these to you if it weren't safe? And it's like, well, I'm going to go go to the doctor. It's good seeing you. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's to quote Tom Cruise of all people when he had that Matt Lauer uh, interview oh, where he, was, yeah. <laughs> and he said, but you know, he kind of went a little wacko yeah. on that, but he did make one good point where he said, he said, Matt says, why well, I got, I know people that take antidepressants and it really helped them. And then Tom said, um yeah but matt it's is is it the ideal situation and i said well that's actually the probably the only good, good point he made in this whole tirade but i get what he's saying there it, yeah is it the ideal situation it's like blood pressure meds yeah. yeah i can just jump on blood pressure meds or i can reduce sodium i can exactly. drop the weight yeah. i could start exercising which is the ideal situation do you really want to be you know that other stuff doesn't have side effects no. blood pressure meds do yeah. You know, and blood pressure meds are something. It's, well, it's, is, it's a know. good point because, I mean, I think meds are absolutely required. Absolutely. We need them for so many things. But should they be right. our go-to? Should they be the first thing? Should they be the thing we want in the end to right. change our lives? No, I mean, I, you right. know, benzos should always be a short stopgap unless it's for some very severe cases. But they should be, a you know, once off, two to four weeks max. You know, even that is dangerous. Right. But, you know, right. we have to be careful about them because it can cause dependence at any time. But but still, it's great they have right. them. I, mean, I wouldn't want to be in an ER setting as an ER doc if I didn't have benzos to go after an agitated patient when they come in. You can't treat them unless right. you have something to calm them down and shoot them up with some midazolam or some Valium or something and get them to calm down so I can treat them. They're absolutely necessary right. sometimes. Now, I don't want to keep giving that drug to them once they leave the ER. And <laughs> that's the difference. Yeah. And that's the difference. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've sometimes got you know got some weird looks, and rightfully so, because I'll I'll say, uh, I think benzos are great. They're a great drug. They're very effective, <laughs> and, and that's the problem. Immediately, people go. <laughs> the problem what? is they're very go, no, effective. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. They're very. They're it's a great drug, just like opiates are a wonderful yeah. drug. If you use them every blue moon, yeah. you know what I mean. If you get a tooth pulled and you take a couple Percocets. Mm-hmm. Boy, you will be so thankful when you sleep that night and you don't bang in your head against the wall. And, you know, if you are having bad insomnia and you take a Xanax every now and then to yeah. help you sleep, or if you had to fly or, or something major happened and you were panicking mm-hmm. in your life, like some real big thing, and you just needed something just to, you know, stop you from going over the edge. Like I could see applications where if you took one Xanax a year or if you had a prescription for, say, three Xanax a year, hell, I think probably everybody exactly, could take that mostly exactly. the rest of their life and it'd be go, I love that. Yeah. That's great. Every, I fly once a year and I take a Xanax before I fly. It helps me sleep and I get through it. It's just, it was never intended to be taken every damn day. Unfortunately. Yeah. You know that, I mean? That's the problem. You're right. You're right. And that's where the danger comes in. Yeah. Cause yeah, the one-off, it, but even, even, even when it's prescribed to somebody as one-offs, we still got to be so careful because it's so easy to wind up saying, well, that helped me fly. Oh, and that also helped me what sleep. Else? Well, yeah, now I got to, and I want right. to go talk to that gal that I met in my psychology class. So, well, one of those would really help me be calm for that. And and that's a yeah, slippery, slope, slippery slope. Slippery yeah. slope. And so, 100%. yeah, the, the trick is very, we got to be a lot better at prescribing and a lot better and more careful of monitoring our prescribing, you know, because yeah. that prescribing gets us in a lot of trouble. So, and it's just, and there's still so many yeah. out there who have no worries about benzodiazepine mm-hmm. prescribing and think they're completely safe. There's still a lot of doctors yeah. out there like that, you know? Oh, it's unbelievable. It is. Yeah. yeah. And that's the scary part. There's a revolution, so to speak, coming here. There's a big change coming it's, down the pipeline, yeah. you know? And I think it's it's already starting to happen. I think we're following opioids and we're following some other drugs that this has happened to. Um, and we're learning from them and we're, you know, it's, it's getting more and more. I would tell you, we're getting a lot more coverage now about this stuff and, I don't see the tide turning yet as far as prescribing goes. 
unfortunately, because mm-hmm. the need seems to be outweighing, you know, our message and the, right. you know, the needs increasing, right. you know, inc- incrementally. And it's and but unfortunately, the education needs to speed up to try to catch up with that, you know. Yeah. And and bigger than Benzo. So we get rid of Benzo's then we still have a mental health crisis in this country, in this planet. Then you go, well, what, what helps this? And that's why I felt like everything I've been working for. And I, I tell my clients, like I still do everything that I preach. Like I get up in the morning at a certain time and I go outside to sunlight and I drink Beautiful. a glass of water and I go for a walk. Yeah. We, we walk morning, twice every single I, day without fail. And yep, we're like, when it's yep. raining outside, we're the only ones still out there walking. My wife and I are. Yeah. I did that the other yep. day. And we're <laughs> still, we still rain. do our walks. And in fact, I got to go do one yep. here right after this. My wife's probably going to want to yep. go walk. And so it's crazy. Yeah. But so I think we need a better overhaul of mental health approach in this country. Yeah, we, we need do. to like, we do. We need to just that that's coming down, but we're, we're evolving. We you are. know, I can feel it. Yeah. I know there's a lot of negativity about the country and the shape and, yeah. and go back to the make America great again and all this stuff. But it's like, the truth is America is as good as is better than it's ever been right now. It really has. It really is. Poverty is at an all time low. It's a pretty good shape. There's more freedom. There's more equality. There's less, you know, uh, you know, more rights, like all down the line. I mean, I mean, I I think there's more sensationalism than ever. Yeah, and, I, I, and we're also able with to... everything good, bad comes along with it. So, do we have good things? Absolutely, and we also have some bad things. Right. And and the funny thing is, depending on who you talk to, some people will say it's the opposite thing. That's the good, and not the opposite thing. That's the yeah, bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, do we have a lot going for us? And I think if we can, I think if for me, if we can learn to work together again, uh, that's all I'm asking is be a little more unified and work together again. Um, the divisiveness, yeah. I think, is hard on a lot of people, you know, regardless of what yeah. side you're on. It's just really hard. And I wish we could yeah. find a way to, you know, start talking to each other more and not, you know, just, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Right. No, I hear you. I I, I feel like we're a um, we're a, an experiment. America, oh, God, especially. Yeah. I think human human like human so... beings are experiments. So, yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah. America, but I mean, America is a human. Yeah. A human needs a tribe, you know, or they want a tribe anyway. Yeah, we're drawn to. I, a I tribe. say my tribe, yeah. my tribe is being human. That's enough. <laughs> I <laughs> you like know it. I mean? That's enough. Yep. But no, it's got to be race. It's got to be I sex. Know. It's got to be age. It's got to be wealth. It's got to be where you live, what team you vote for, and all this crap yeah. politics. And, and, and it used to be all those religion. things was the color. It was what made life great. Right. And to turn right. that stuff into stuff that divides us, I don't, I don't understand it, but. You know, yeah. it's our fear. Yeah. And I, going back to Bruce Lee, he said a, a really amazing quote where he said, people fear what they don't understand. But if you show them the beauty of what they don't understand, they no longer fear it because it's become part of them. And that was his whole message. He wanted to give the world a Chinese hero. Yeah. And he said, you know, the Chinese have been closed for so long yeah, yeah. and that the world doesn't understand us. And they have these, you know, these misconceptions and predisposed ideas and so he wanted, especially in America, it was very important for him to try to give this a hero, yeah. you know, and bring Chinese culture and, and that kind of thing to America. Yeah, it's really beautiful when you look at it that it way. Is. But it I really think it's is. true. Yeah. If you can, like, I have friends that are Republicans and I got friends that are exactly. liberals. I've got family yeah. on both sides. In fact, I, I have always been independent my whole life. I've never declared a party because I can't decide, right. you know, <laughs> but but that's right. just who I am. But yeah, I, mean, I, have, I don't, I don't. I don't care if somebody's ultra left or ultra right. I still like them. That's my problem is I like people. Right. So, you know, right. but yes. you know, now don't tell me who I can like or don't like because I may not agree with you. Yeah. Don't That's tell me that. Sticky. But I'm gonna like you when I first meet you. I don't care what your political beliefs are. Tell me about right. your life. Tell me who you are. I mean, I'm I just I like people yeah. in general. Most of the time they don't disappoint me. They're they're amazing. You know? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I think uh, once we once we can get we're we're at this very critical evolution point now, you mm-hmm. know, and if we can get past this hump to seeing all of us as one again, yeah, and then suddenly all of those, like you said, now it's just decorative colors. I want diversity. Exactly. We want all of that, yeah. you know, and and so the default is sort of this idea that, well, look, fast forward two three hundred years from now, the, the the world will all be a mixed race and of one totalitarian government and religion, whatever. I mean. 
it, the idea that we're going to break down tribalism by all becoming one tribe in some sense of the higher fashion, but going back to that union sense, it's still kind of a mirage. It's kind of a, it's a false uh, ego, you know, that we're all just collectively saying, let's, what if we all like the, the, uh, you know, the Mets? <laughs> well, I was just thinking sports teams is perfect. It's like we can, I mean, I'm a diehard Chiefs fan you know, living in Denver. So, I mean, I carry my Chiefs bags into my Denver shopping store with Brock, you know, and people don't always right. like it, but I, I've never heard any bad mm -hmm. things said to me. They always say, oh man, good game or whatever, or they'll tease me and trash talk. Right. Why can't we have that with all the other things? It's like where, yeah, I'm different. And mm -hmm. yes, I'm drawn to people, but I still like you and it's okay to tease me about it. But, you know, we used to have that. Right. We could tease about this stuff, but it was done with love and caring and, you know, it wasn't, right. and it's like, I don't know what happened to that. It's like that kind of, I don't know, you know, maybe I'm just too old fashioned. It's a whole nother hour of podcast. Oh, God, yeah. We could do that. Like, the collective yeah. social, you <laughs> know, we don't why of that. Into, I got yeah. theories. But, but <laughs> I, I think you and I kind of have some similarities where it's just, you know, the main thing is we want to find a way to work together and be together and kind of, you know, we'll get through this. We yeah. Will. And I think things are getting better. I'm yeah. not, I'm also like a, um, an optimistic pessimist. Okay or a pessimistic optimist a pessimistic optimist or something like that you know so in one sense i want to sound all kumbaya like i think we are as more evolved than ever but it still boils me yeah uh, makes sure. me sad that we're so under the curve of evolution right now it's kind of sad it's like this is the best we can do guys i know i know <laughs> really yeah this is the best we can do hmm. well that, that to me that brings okay. it all circled back to gratitude so find the things in life that are good and let's focus on you those. Have to. And you focus on those. Right. And you there's a to. lot of good out there. There's a lot of good out there. So, and that's like, I, I think it's a good uh, uh, road for anyone who's aging. Cause yeah. like when you're in your teens, your 20s, the world's your oyster. Oh, yeah. Music, film, every product yeah. is marketed. Exactly. You. Yeah. You are the demographic. You're the demographic. Yeah. And once you get about 40, 35, 40, somewhere <laughs> in there, just, yeah. once you've, and it's designed beautifully that once you start to see through the game, and you're no longer foolishly being hooked yeah. by all these things. You're suddenly is right around the time you start to become obsolete. I know, you know, irrelevant. Well, not not entirely. Like, I'm in my well, late fifties now, and I'm still the demographic for healthcare, mm -hmm. for <laughs> medicines, for oh, pharmaceuticals, right, 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 right. For, for this right. one niche. It's like you suddenly you start to yeah, see all yeah. the commercials for all the medically based things because yeah, that's other true. Than that, no, nothing else. Oh, they don't God. care about me, but they care about me now for all this. <laughs> they care about you for that. That is so true. Yeah, but no, yeah, you're, we you're graduated right. like, into that. New. Yeah, I mean, and that's just normal. It's like there's, you know, the youth is where it is. That's the growth of the world. That's the growth of the country. And, you know, but you're right. As you get older, but as you get older, you mature and you see, you know, the reality, I think, in the world. And and, mm -hmm. and you can see the positivity. I think it's, I think, and God, the, you know, what was it? Somebody said one time, it's like, you know, you can see the world good or bad. And either way, you'll be right. Right. And I love that because right. I know I'm paraphrasing it, but it's basically saying if you look at it with positive eyes, you're going to see the positivity. If you look at it with negative eyes, right. you're going to see the negativity. You know, and I think there's a lot of truth in that. You know? sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's whatever you focus on. So that's why I think when you reach like our age, it's like if you want to keep your sanity, you can't keep playing the game you were playing when you were no. 20. No. Right, because now it's not about you no. anymore. You're starting to get a little bit irrelevant in a sense of the yeah. world of that uh, in that level. If the music isn't the movies. Like soon, it's like your taste gets a little bit better, and you go, "That band sucks," and that movie sucks. <laughs> and, and you look back and at what suddenly you they like, go, "Have you done this where you yeah. watch a movie and you show it to somebody and you say, oh, this was awesome. I got to show you this movie that you saw twenty years ago when you were young,' and you yeah. watch it, it's going, like, "What the hell was I thinking?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I had different tastes back then, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, exactly. You, yeah, exactly. Your taste re gets refining and yeah. evolve. Hopefully, the, I was a big fan of uh, American Werewolf in oh, London. Oh God, love classic. That. Love it. Classic. Love it. Love yeah. it. So I had a friend, and I go, "Oh man, did you see part two? Oh. And I was like, "That was a great yeah. movie, American Werewolf in Paris." Yeah. And wait, I put it on, I rented it, and I was so excited to show my friend. And about five minutes into it, I just apologized. <laughs> and I said, "I'm sorry." <laughs> I did not. I don't think I finished that one either. The first one was great. It was such a cult film, but the second one, I don't think oh, I finished it. Man. Yeah, it was a turn. Yeah. It was the biggest stinker ever, man. I was just like, "What the hell is not anything the way I remembered it? It was so <laughs> terrible." But you got to keep your sanity. Like now, I focus on 
what matters in my exactly. life. Exactly. Which coincidentally were always the things that mattered anyway. So it might be like fishing. They always did, but we were so busy paying attention to dating and to cars and to music and to everything else. We just, we didn't have the... In the rat race. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do in your youth. But as you age, that's the beauty of aging, is you you slow down a little bit and you get to appreciate things you never really took the time to appreciate before, you know? Yeah, and you... You don't care as much as what people think. Oh man, is another blessing. That is so true. Right, so true. It's like you're less inhibited in some ways to just be yourself now. Boy, I I was just saying that a couple times this last week. I'm glad you mentioned that. But I'm I'm comfortable with who I am now, flaws and all, and I love them. And it's just who I am, and I don't care. And I don't care if people have problem with them. But yeah, this is who I am, and I'm okay with that. You know, but that takes age. I think that takes some maturity of age to get there. It is a maturity thing too, because yeah. just because you're getting older doesn't no, mean you're that doesn't automatically older. come. Yeah, but you know what I mean. But you got to learn from it. Um, but if you're smart, if you're really, really smart, man, you might be able to tap into that earlier. Yeah, you know when you're really when you're really young. But some things are just like they say. Uh, you, you know, you'll never know the. You'll never be able to be able to really appreciate your youth. Or yeah, the, it's what the, the other it's wasted on. Yeah, and gone. that's true. Yeah, that's true. But there's so much like, going on, and you know. And I feel for people in their youth because there's there's just so much happening in your life at that time, and you're trying to keep track yeah. of everything, and you're trying to fit in, and you're you're feeling awkward, and you're feeling weird, and you don't belong, and yeah, there's so much going on. It's hard, man. And I'm glad I'm not there. God's I'm joke. glad I'm not there right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like God's joke. Yeah. It's like if we evolved, if we if we aged in reverse, how how well, the whole Benjamin Button right? thing Could you or whatever. Being yeah. 55, <laughs> And in the body of I you know. at 30 or 25, right? Wow. You're like in your prime and you're so oh smart. And you're so developed yeah. and you can appreciate this with a whole new level of like, this is amazing. You know, it's so, it's whole conversation a, for our tragedy. next podcast there, David. I think, yeah, that is great, man. <laughs> That's so yeah, funny. It's, it's like, tragedy. okay, we're on, we're on hour two of what could easily be a six hour podcast, but I'm going to wrap it up anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I tell you, you this uh, is great because we can it. carry this stuff into whatever we're going to do, we'll figure it out. But I think we're going to do something here, man. I, I'm looking forward to that. And... Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy it. And you should come back on mine. Soon, I'd be happy man, to if you're, if you're yeah. open to it. I'd like to have you pretty much regular. Yeah. Same so here. Maybe later we'll, we'll figure that out. Maybe like another Monday uh, okay. later this month or something, even if you're, if you're open to it. Yeah. It would probably be after April. I'm heading down to that, that arc. I'm speaking down at the arc summit in Atlanta. And so, and I'm taking a week oh. vacation on top of it. So I've gone a big chunk of April down at that conference. Um, yeah, oh. I don't know. I was, remember I mentioned I might pop down to Florida, but I'm not sure if I will. We, I was going to yeah, ask Yeah, I'm still yeah. thinking about it, or we might be heading up north to Ohio to see family. Um, I'm not sure, because mm-hmm. my wife's not going to come out and join me. Anyway, long story short, we'll figure well, it out, and we'll reconnect, and we'll get something set up. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. If you come down to the... If you come down to see Mickey Mouse, I know that's you know, I'm an right old up. theme park junkie, as backyard. I mentioned. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> it's hard not to go to those things, but yeah. <laughs> oh well, but <laughs> I may not be this trip. Awesome. We'll see, but I do want to come back, cut down, and visit you at some point and talk yeah, more. But great. we'll figure it out. All right, man. Very cool, man. Hey. Well, thank you so much for having me. Oh, on. my pleasure. pleasure. Thanks for coming on our podcast. This has been great. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this up. Probably be up by about the first um, of the month because I released most of mine around oh, the first, okay. and I'll get that up here in a week or so before we go. So. But awesome. Thanks, David. Sounds good. Yeah, it's man. been a pleasure. Yes, sir. Um, everybody, just to remind you, it's um powersbenzocoaching.com, right? Is your site. And you right. got a YouTube channel, the links right there on there. And um, and also you got the Powers Recovery School coming up. And yeah, the Benzo, oh, Benzo Recovery sorry, School. Benzo Recovery School coming up. Um, anything yeah. else you want to plug? You got books or anything else you want to talk about or um no, good? Not All at right. the moment. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> hey, always happy to do that. And my pleasure. <laughs> Um, it's great having yeah. you on, and I will we'll chat with you real soon. I want to thank David Powers again for taking his time to speak with us. I look forward to working with this gentleman more and more as we continue what we do here. Um, and please, if you get a chance, go check him out at powersbenzocoaching.com. I hope you'll do that. And now, before we close out, please allow me just 25 seconds for our disclaimer. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice in any way. The host of this podcast is not a medical professional, nor is he engaged in rendering medical, health, or psychological advice, nor any other kind of personal or professional services. The views and opinions expressed by our listeners and interview guests on this podcast, whether read from textual submissions or presented in their own voice, do not necessarily reflect those of the Benzofree podcast or of its host.
Withdrawal tapering or any other change in dosage of benzodiazepines, non-benzodiazepines, or any other prescription drugs should only be done under the direct supervision of a licensed physician. Our full disclaimer can be viewed on our website at benzofree.org slash disclaimer. Our next scheduled episode is episode 116. Thank you again for joining me today, and please let us know how we did. Keep calm, taper slowly, and take care of yourself. I'll see you next time.